Hi and welcome to the Advanced Shadow Studio 2 tutorial. In this video we're going to get really granular and fine and play with all the settings and see what they do and just have a good talk about shadows. I found a good way to start is with a circle and then this sort of helps you look dev. The default looks fine but I feel like it sort of gets soft too quickly and then I want to really tweak the fall off because the shadow like a glow is all about how good is the fall off does the fall off look good or not and that's how good the result will i'm not really happy how this looks at the moment so let's get tweaking first of all i want it to be further distance um and it's it's getting too soft too quickly let's tweak that so that's under easing and i'm gonna keep the ease at 100 and then just play with these so the softness so at 0%, the softness becomes linear. The start, it gets soft quickly and then doesn't really increase by that much. And then the other end of the spectrum you've got, I think this is much more realistic or this is the look that I'm going for. We're emulating a quadratic fall off, an exponential fall off. And that's what this easing is at 100%. It's exponential and it's gonna get uh, softer very slowly, but as it builds up momentum, it gets softer much quicker. I want the shadow to be quite soft at the end because I don't know, I just really love these ray traced looking shadows. That's usually what I'm going for. A result that's expensive to get in 3D and diffused or soft shadows, generally when you're ray tracing are much more expensive, the softer they get. Uh, but because these are fake, uh, it's not really expensive like this is rendering really quickly. So that's sort of what I'm going for. The shadow is a little bit dark, so maybe I'll play with that bit that's looking better so opacity is a bit difficult because you've got many sliders to play with um, the end one sort of affecting it more towards the end and the start is the start affects it globally because that's what it starts with and then as each sample carries on um, it is based on the st opacity start and then interpolates to that but this is a look that I'm pretty happy with I might uh, just do a linear opacity ease here and then lower the opacity just see what that gets me so that's more reliant on the opacity end that's looking good okay so my point for all this is I've got my beautiful fall off the fall off is important now I copy it and I want to apply it to some text and here is just the default shadow studio so I paste it onto my text and whoa, my beautiful result that I have here doesn't look good here and the reason for that is, is that this is basically a solid blob. Whereas this text here is text, it's, you know, it's lines and the O's have holes in it. And so that's the result that we get. Doesn't matter how good you think your settings are, the result that you're gonna get is a combination of the input and the settings that you've got here. If we were to say, instead of making this a fill, make this just you know a, uh, a stroke then you'll see okay we're gonna get a different looking result and well this does look quite nice it's definitely a different look to what we had before this this type of look so point being the secret to getting a good looking shadow is a lot of tweaking generally a lot of hard work unfortunately there's no shortcuts so let's start again here let's let's try and make this look good okay so I like it generally but it's too soft gets too soft too quickly so come in play with this easing here push that up to 100 and the distance also going to kind of affect the um, the fall off so let's play with the distance here I want it to get really soft but I, I think it's getting fall off looks too sharp like it's it starts off it's not getting softer and then all of a sudden bam it's like way too soft let's fix that 100% looks better um, maybe a bit extreme and then we've got the distance easing as well and these sort of these sort of affect each other it's just same as the distance sort of affecting um, the look of the softness so for distance I'll probably go 90% and then softness I'll probably go 90 oh no it needs to probably be 95 so that looks good the shadow is a bit um, dark so I'll play with that we've got opacity start and end here so I'll go 10 and then 30 
yeah, that's the fall off that I'm, I'm happy with there. Okay, so I'm happy with the look and fall off of my shadow. So now we're just gonna talk about some general other things. You can see not looking so great. Black and white is looking a lot different to now in color here. So what I suggest when working with color is lowering the opacity of this source opacity to zero, setting it to soft light and having another copy set to normal. And now probably work out your opacities by, you know, sort of going half, half, because these are both at 50%, we can't then just have the source opacity of 50%. So then I'll make a third layer and have that uh, with no shadow effect on it, but then full opacity. So that's probably looking better than it was to start with, but the shadow is looking a little bit see-through, not as rich as it was. So I'm gonna go 70% on the normal, maybe 80%. Yeah, so let's just take a screenshot and compare that. So that's what it was, this is what it was looking like before. Um, the shadow has literally no color in it. Um, and as it fades, you sort of see the purple beneath it. If you compare it, this is looking much better. We're actually getting some color. It is a lot more work. You'll have, if you're doing the same method as me, you'll have three layers, one soft light, one normal, and then foreground. But I think the result is really worthwhile. Back to black and white land, let's talk about buffer expansion and different types of layers. So you might notice that you are getting this funny looking thing happening when the text is sort of cut off. And you might not always notice this because for example, if the shadow was the other way around, then we wouldn't be getting this effect. Um, but it would be most apparent if we were at say exactly 90, you can see the E there, you know, as it transitions in, that is not looking good. So there are two ways around this. Um, I'll just quickly do a quick animation, you know, not smooth at all as it, as it enters. We've got this jump with the shadow. One way of fixing this is to increase the size of the composition, so make it much larger. And then you can see we're actually rendering that. And then when you go to render it, put it in its own comp and put it back to 1280. And now we have none of that issue. We can see the shadow is actually being drawn off screen uh, and that's solved that problem. Another way is to take that text and put it in its own composition. Say we have this text here, crop it, comp, crop comp to region of interest. And then back in here, can make this back to 1280 by 720. And then now we are not gonna have that problem. And the reason is because this is not continuously rasterized. So um, because it's not continuously rasterized, it's kind of helpful for us. If we were to set the switch again, then we'd be back to square one with the uh, exact same problem. But if it's not, well then it's, yeah, it's working for us. We don't have that issue. However, you have to keep that in mind that they are also downsides to not having it continuously rasterized. So for instance, if we have this uh, non-continuously rasterized image here and we go ahead and add Shadow Studio, if for example, we had this set to radial and we set the light source to the top right here, because this is not continuously rasterized, if we move this, the layer and the light source moves, which is probably not what you want. Um, I mean, the point of radial is that the transforms of your layer sort of react to the direction of the light. And if the light source sort of looks like it's parented to the layer itself, well, it's, I don't know, it looks kind of confusing and kind of weird. So in that particular case, what you would want to do is, you know, reveal this layer source in project, replace it with a pre-comp, and then you can set the pre-comp to continuously rasterized. And now, you know, if the light source is over here, the layer is going to react to the light source. As you can see, now the direction is here. Now that the layer's over here, it's sort of, you know, reacting to it. There are pros and cons of collapse transforms and not. Um, generally, collapse transforms is what you'll want. But again, if you run into this issue with text, you'll either want to pre-comp it or Generally, just what I do is expand this comp, render it at a higher resolution, and then final render a lower, lower resolution. 
So I think I've been talking for long enough. Um, basically, to get good results, you have to really be fiddling with the settings a lot and just trial and error. There's no really quick fix to getting amazing looking results every time. Like for example, I think I mentioned in the preset video, we have this preset that looks beautiful on layers that are thin, but then if you change the font to make them fat, it looks really ugly. There's just no settings that look good in all situations. You've got to really tweak them, not be afraid to mess with literally every setting to try and get a good result. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this product and create some kick-ass shadows with Shadow Studio 2.